Hello everyone, welcome back. We're going to do a day after analysis after shooting uh, 1,000 yards, okay? So this is my first time shooting 1,000 yards and I got 8 out of 10 hits on the paper here in red, okay? And the total group is 22 inches, okay? Um, so that translates into 2.2 MOA at 1,000 yards. Now granted, it's only on 8 out of 10 hits, but hey, I'm going to take it, okay? So what I want to do in this video, uh, because this is my first time that I was shooting 1,000 yards, and I want to tell you guys what it took to get there, right, and be able to make those hits the first time shooting it, um, so that you guys can do it yourselves, right? And I'm doing this video, like, now, today, I don't want to do it like five years from now where after, let's say, I've had a chance to, I don't know, do this a whole bunch of times because then I might have like a, a different perspective after doing this, let's say, whatever, the 10th time. I want to give you guys my, you know, my thoughts after do, after having just done this for the first time and, and I think being fairly successful at 1,000 yards, um, 8 out of 10 shots at 22 inches, which is basically man size target. Okay, my size anyway, man, man my size type of target, okay? Um, so, first let's talk about the equipment that you're gonna need. You can do this on budget, okay? Um, I use the uh, Palmetto AR-10, right? PA-10 Gen 3, uh, $700 gun. I got this over the uh, uh, the Black Friday weekend, 2023. Uh, the way you do it is you buy the lower separate from the upper. You save some money that way. The scope is the primary arms 5 to 25 by 56. This is the SLX version. Okay, so this uh, I got this is a, I got this for $500. They list it for like $600, $700, but um, if you get it with the holiday discounts and stuff like that, $500. Okay, and then I've got this red dot here. This is the House on 507C. Um, on my pistols, I prefer the 507 ACSS, and basically I just put this on here because. I, you know, I, I, I don't like having this on my pistols anymore. So this is a good place for this to be. I prefer the ACSS on my pistols. So I have this offset to my left eye. And the, the way I use this is when I get on target, I use my left eye. I, my left eye basically sees out there, right? Uh, you know, uh, 1x magnification to the red dot. I get that on target. And then I transition into the scope. And it's, you know, basically I just wink one eye. When I look in the, in the scope with my right eye, I'm very close to it, okay? So when you're in 25 magnification, that's a, a way, way easier uh, to work and get on target fast, okay? So I have found this to be a, a big help, okay? So um, so everything's pretty budget here, okay? Palmetto, $700 gun, um, primary arms 5 to 25, SLX, that's a $500 scope, and the red dot, and it doesn't have to be a hollow sun, it could be any cheap, uh, uh, at least a six MOA dot uh, will work for, for this purpose, right? Because it's not going on a pistol. You're just using this to help get you on target, okay? So as far as the ammunition, I, I did not use a Gucci brand, okay? I used Freedom Munitions, um, 1750 per box. And then over the holidays, you get it with the free shipping for over $200. It got me, it got me 2,000 yards, right? Uh, I With this, this is 147 grain. I also have the 150 grain. I, I used up the 147 grain just because uh, first in, first out. Basically, I wanted to get rid of this stuff, uh, and I got I got a lot of it. I've, I've um, one of the things I tell people: anytime you buy a gun, buy 2,000 rounds of ammunition. Okay, if you because if you're not going to buy 2,000 2,000 rounds of ammunition for that gun, okay, you're not serious about training with that gun. Okay, so that's my rule for buying a new gun. Okay, I don't buy a new gun. Unless I'm buying 2,000 rounds of ammunition specifically for that gun. Even if it's like a caliber I already have, the ammunition I already have stockpile doesn't count. It's got to be another 2,000 rounds of ammunition because now I know I'm going to shoot that gun. Okay, Because uh, the point of shooting is not to shoot other guns. If you're going to buy a new gun, you don't want to be shooting other guns less. You just want to be doing more overall shooting. Okay, So this budget, Freedom Munition, 1750 per box, will get you to 1,000 yards. Okay, uh, The only thing that you need... Right. In addition to this fairly budget equipment, uh, is you got to bring some some skill to the table, and it doesn't have to be a whole lot. It doesn't. Have, here's the thing: if you can shoot two inches at 100 yards, you can shoot a thousand yards. Okay. If you can shoot 
three inches. If, if the best you can do is three inches at 100 yards, you'll still get you'll still get uh, to a thousand yards. I mean, the group will be a little bit wider, right? But with, if, if you're if you're a three inch at 100 yards shooter, you can still get to a thousand yards because well, you're gonna you're gonna see what I mean. There's other things besides like how st how still can you hold the reticle going on here. Um, one of the things, like when you're shooting, let's say 100 yards, right? It's like you know you're trying to be perfectly still, take your time with your shot, hold your breath, perfectly still. Well, here's the thing: when you're shooting a thousand yards, the the most difficult thing that you're fighting against is the changing wind conditions. Okay, so what I found is that once I figured out what my what my wind hole was going to be, what I wanted to do is get as many shots on, get my shots off before the wind has a chance to change. Okay. So there's less emphasis on hold your breath, don't move so much, okay? Uh, the emphasis for me, first time doing this, right, um, was get the shots off before the wind has a chance to change, okay? Now, does it have to be a 308? Can it be 556, five, okay? And, I, and believe me, I tried, okay? The problem with the 556 five, is you're not going to be able to see the splashes, Um and you need to see the splashes in order to make the corrections. Okay, so, so, uh, at, at, and I tried it first. I, I mean, I, and I bit, I did, I did an, another video. The last time I was there, I was able to get three out of 10 hits at 850 yards with 5.56. Five, okay, so, uh, it, it was 77 grain. The bullet will get there. Okay, uh, the problem is, is, the problem is, you don't know where the bullet is impacting because it doesn't move. It usually is not going to move the dirt around enough. And if you don't know where the impact is, you can't correct. You can't make your hits. So that's the problem I have with the 5.56. Five, now, uh, another part of this is selecting the right environment, okay? Because on the same gun range I was yesterday, there was, let's say, a target at, uh, uh, at, at around 900 yards, right? Uh, that, I would, that I wanted to hit, but behind it, there was like a lot of greenery, right? It was, it was like woods behind it, and I couldn't spot, I couldn't see the impacts. So I could, there's no way I could get on target at 900 yards because I couldn't see the, it, the splashes behind it. I couldn't see the splashes, so I couldn't make corrections. So that's an important part of long distance shooting. You gotta pick the right target. Or wait for the target, if it's a moving target, to get to the right position so that you can see splashes. Okay, so that's one of the things that, that maybe you haven't considered before, right? Um, consider, consider that your first shot is probably going to be a miss and it's probably going to take a couple of shots to walk, to get, to figure out what your right hold is, okay? Now, from what, I have found, what I have found out in the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, is that this is actually the way, like, military, military snipers make their long distance shots okay because like i don't know growing up i used to watch these sniper movies and it was always like yeah one shot one kill and yeah that's great out to about 300 yards maybe 500 yards uh where the wind is not messing around with the bullet so much okay uh but when you get past 500 yards the wind especially you know if you have even just a little bit of wind even uh because yesterday the wind that i had at the time i was shooting this in my position i had no wind and then downrange, I saw the ribbons moving a little bit, but it was enough to shift the bullet over two mils. Okay, so it was a two mil hole while I was shooting this. Uh, and it actually shit changed in the middle of me shooting it. And I spotted an impact over here to the side. And I made, uh, I, I, it was actually on my ninth shot. I spotted an impact someplace over here. And then I, instead of taking a two mil hold, I took a three mil hold. And I shift it over. Okay, so um, so anyway, what I was saying is, with a lot of these um, uh, military snipers, a lot of these world records that you hear about, it's not a one shot, one kill. Okay, what they don't tell you is that it, it usually takes a lot of shots to walk the bullets on target at like whatever they're shooting at, like two miles away or something. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the culture, because what I, from what I heard in Afghanistan, when they were shooting at these guys at like two miles away. They didn't think that they would get hit, so they would just stand out in the open and just look back at them, uh, rather than take cover. So that's what allowed. That's the reason why we've been setting all these. We were able to set all these records, or snipers were able to set these records, because they were able to take multiple shots, 
uh, you know, and their spotter was able to walk them onto the target. Okay, so you shooting for the first time at a thousand yards, you're probably not going to be working with a spotter. Um, you're going to be self-spotting, which is why you need a scope that has a mill grid. Okay, you need a scope that has all these dots over here. So, and the, the purpose of this is you're going to take a hold, right? Right, and you got to start somewhere, right? You're going to take a hold. Um, and, you can, and, and initially, you can grab the information off a, off a ballistic calculator or just randomly off the internet, um, which is probably going to be wrong, but it'll get you in the ballpark, right? Um, and, and then use that as a starting point to see where your impacts are correct. So if you're holding... So here's the thing. When I, when I started, um, with, uh, my fir I first started working at 850 yards, okay? So that's the ones on this side over here. So initially I expected, actually, I w these are the notes that I went in with, okay? So I had these notes, I wrote them down in this box. So at 800 yards, I had my hold for nine mils. Um, so I said, okay, I'm at 850 yards, because I saw 900 yards, 11 mils. I said, I'm gonna hold for uh, 10 mils, okay? So mind you, the, the, the zero on this rifle is a 50 yard zero. Second zero at 200 yards. So I'm like, okay, so I'm going to hold for 10 mils, which is like in between. So I held at 10 mil, for 10 mils at 850 yards, and I saw that my splash was high over the target on the dirt behind it, okay? Because basically there was, you know, the, 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 the way it was set up, in the area where I placed this, there, was, there wasn't any grass. There was just rocks and stuff like that, so I could, I could spot the splash. Now, that's also the reason why you can't do this why I wasn't successfully able to do this with the 5.56, five, because believe me, I tried. The problem I had with the 5.56 five, is that I could not see the splashes. I saw some splashes. Like I would see like one splash. I, I was able to pick up like one splash every like maybe six rounds. Um, and then I would say, okay, oh, there's a splash, you know. But then I was like, I didn't know if that was just like, I didn't, I, I, I couldn't be, I wasn't able to build up a consistency, right? Uh, because I didn't know if, the, if that was a splash or I didn't know if the reason, the, the, like when I took the next shot, okay, I didn't see a splash. Well, is it because the first one was wrong or is just the, the bullet spiraling like really loose? So I, I, I tried that for a bit on this particular day. I couldn't see splashes consistently. I said, okay, forget it. We're going to do the, uh, let's go up to the 308. Okay? I pulled out the AR-10 and um, I started off with the 10 mil hold at 850 yards. I'm holding, uh, I think it was like uh, center of the paper, and I see the splash way high. I take a second shot, I see the same splash basically in that same area. Okay, oh, okay, that's it. Two, two splashes in a row, way high. I'm definitely high. So from the 10, I dialed down two mils, I went to eight mils. Okay, I took a, I, I basically aimed on that target, uh, same target, and I saw that the splash was like right there on the target like it was I don't, I don't think i hit it but it was like right next to it or something so i said okay that's gonna be my hold eight mils and the other thing is i saw that that uh for the most part my splashes the way it is i dialed up yeah you have to dial up you can't hold on the reticle because like eight mils would be like all the way down here in the bottom of your scope and you can't see it so that's why you you, you dial the turrets so that you're using this you're using this chevron over here the center aiming point so what I did is I dialed up eight mils at 850, and I saw the, the, the splash was like two mils to the right. So then I transitioned that dot to the target, took my, and basically that's when I took my 10 shots. So uh, at 850, that's the ones with the circle. I got one, two, uh, where's the third one? Where's the third one? Somewhere? Three. So I got one, two, three. Three out of 10, okay? So one of the things that I learned from shooting this, remember, this is this is my second time shooting 850 yards, okay? I never shot that far before, um, so I didn't have a whole lot of experience with shooting 850 yards. So one of the things that I noticed that while I was shooting the 850 yards is that I was getting some splashes around it, right? Um, but I was like, in my mind, I was like, okay, the wind shifted. Because, I, because I, just like now, I can feel the wind going on and off. I know. I'm like, okay, it's going to come back, you know. So I just kept, I kept, I stayed on that hold. Um, we got three hits. I go, all right, let's push this back to 900 yards. So now with 900 yards, I'm like, okay, 
This time I'm, I'm holding at eight mils. I'm just gonna dial this up another half mil. Uh, took like a shot on, uh, because now I have some da data from the 850. So I dialed up to eight and a half. I'm still holding two mils to the right. Okay, like on this dot over here basically. Okay, um, I, I shoot at a target. I see it's close, 900 yards. I'm like, okay, let's go on the paper. Go on the paper. You know, mind you, it's, it takes like half an hour to go all the way down there and go all the way back. So there's, you know, it's not quite happening as fast as I'm saying it is. So I, I take another 10 shots. I go out and look at the paper at 900 yards. And what I notice is, look, look how nice these shots are. One, two, three, really close. So I'm, getting, I'm starting to get a nice tight grouping, right? But they're way off over here. Now, while, now here's the important thing that I noticed. While I was shooting this, okay, there was a lot of splashes over here. I could see the splashes like to the left of the paper. And I kept thinking to myself, okay, listen, the wind has shifted. It's going to come back. I kept with that same hole when what I should have done. Well, now wait, actually, I should have. Uh, I should have basically shifted another mill over. Was it on that side? No, actually, maybe I, I think it was on this side. Like the, the, um, the splashes were on that side. I'm holding on this side here. All right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, so the, 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 the splashes are here. I'm holding on this side with two mills over here on the center of the paper. What I should have done was come over one. Should have shifted to one mill. Which, which after I saw the splashes, which basically would have centered me up. So after I went down there and I, and I saw these three shots here, tight for the splash shooter, I'm like, okay, what I have to do is the next time I shoot this, when I see splashes, I have to stop thinking that the wind is going to come back and go back to where it was before. Just immediately shift, shift to the new dot where the impact is, transition that to the center, take the shots, okay? That's what I should have done. So push back to a thousand yards. I did the same deal. I set up a target, took a couple of shots on it. And this time, because I'm using these steel plates as a target. Initially, I was using these big ones, but what I realized, um, I'm better off using the small ones because when I was hitting, I, because when I was actually getting hit at a thousand yards or even 850 yards, with, even with the 308, these steel plates were not moving a whole lot. Okay, I, I couldn't hear any sound, um, so. I, I, there was no way for me to register the hits. That wasn't giving me, you know, I, I couldn't tell if they were hits. So that wasn't giving me any useful information. The, the only thing I could tell is when I had misses. So I said, let me do this. Let, instead of picking one of these big targets that have uh, like two inches wide, I took one that was only like about, I don't know, six or eight inches wide. And I took some shots on that. To, and Because with that, now I could see that, okay, yeah, splash left, splash right. Flash left, flash right. Okay, that's where I need to be. So, I basically that. So uh, that ended up being a eleven. And I, I think initially I started off with eleven mils, and I was hitting low, and then I went up to eleven and a half mils. Okay. Uh, put, so I dial up eleven and a half mils on the turret. Put, put the chevron on the target, and then I think I was holding two mils to the right, like over. over uh, Again, I think the wind was the splash threw off to the right, so I'm holding left two mils. Okay, over he, over here. So I'm taking my hits. I'm shooting. I'm, I'm shooting now. Basically, the I'm not seeing any splashes around the paper, which means that the splashes are, be, are happening behind it. So to me, that's an indication of hits. Okay, I, I, I didn't I didn't expect it to work out that way, but that's how actually how it worked out. When I'm seeing splashes to the left and right, or above it, or below it. I've got misses that I can correct on. If, I'm, if I go, if I, if I take my shot and there's no splashes, that's because the hits are on the paper and the splash is happening behind the paper target and that's why I'm not seeing it. So I'm taking my shots and then as I'm not seeing splashes, I'm actually like going, like I'm trying to, trying to get through my 10 shots as fast as possible before the wind changes. So I think sometime around, like when I got up to like, Shot number seven, I saw a splash, <laughs> took another shot, no splash, so that was a hit. Took shot number nine, I saw a splash, I said, you know what, I'm going to correct on that. Took another hit, no splash, okay. Um, so then I went down range, looked at this, and was completely amazed. We got the uh, 22 inches 
at a thousand yards. So that's all the steps that I went through to be able to hit 1,000 yards. First time doing this. Okay, first time doing this. Now, obviously, it's not my first time shooting, right? Um, like, how much shooting experience do, do I have going into this? Uh, basically, I shoot 100, 200 yards. I can shoot that every day. Okay, uh, not that you need to shoot it every day. But you have to have a lot of experience with shooting 100 yards and 200 yards. Again, just to develop a basic skill, a, a certain comfort level, um, which is not exactly how I shot this because shooting at 100 yards, like you hold, I'm holding my breath, trying to you know really take like going slow with the trigger. At 1,000 yards, I needed to, to actually pick up the speed a little bit before the wind shifted on me. Okay? But you have to have that experience going into it, you know. Um, as a base kind of, right? And then you can, because you can always move away from it, right? You can always get a little bit faster, a little bit sloppier, but if you start off sloppy, it's harder to like, you know, get tighter, okay, when you need to. So uh, I had a whole bunch of experience shooting 100 yards, 200 yards for many years. Um, 500, you need to shoot 500 yards, okay? Um, because now that's where you really start working with your holdovers and your dials. Um, and uh, you're gonna start seeing some splashes and start correcting on your mill grid, right? Start correcting on your mill grid to see where the, where the impacts are. Uh, so you want some practice at, at 500 yards. Uh, in Like here in Pennsylvania, you can find lots of 200 yard ranges. Not so easy to find a 500 yard range. I usually, I usually gotta travel, like drive about two hours. Getting to a thousand yard range, it's a four hour drive for me, okay? Um, so you wanna get as much of experience with your holdovers and your corrections on your mill grid, okay, at 500 yards, okay, and then take that experience over to the thousand yard range. And uh, the takeaway that, like, my lesson, right, was when you when you need to when you see the need for a correction, uh, don't hesitate. Just make the correction, okay. Don't think that the wind is going to come back or whatever. Assume it's not. Take the correction. If you see a splash off the paper, then correct off of that. Uh, and then just use each shot to make a correction if you need to, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's that's what it took for me to get uh, 8 out of 10 out of 1,000 yards uh, in at 22 inches. Uh, one of the things I'm going to say on the mill grid, because I've, I've uh, this, this one was the Primary Arms 5 to 25 by 56 scope SLX, right? So it's a $500 one. And, and the, the mill grid is the Athena BPR. And I've looked at a whole bunch. Like I got another scope over there on the table that's got the sharpshooter one. But I've, I've seen images of different uh, reticle designs. Um, the it, here's one of the things I want to tell you guys to kind of like watch out for, avoid. It's not going to be helpful for you because you've got a lot of reticles out there that have a mill grid, and then on the one mill lines, right? Like they, they like on the will, one mill lines, they'll give you like dots, like every point every every point two mil like it'll give you like a like a like a, 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 a two mil dot hold you don't need that fine of a of a measurement okay not not for this not for um for for, for self-spotting okay you might need it for like measuring the height of something for range estimating and the way this athena bpr is they give you like these fine measurements up here like in in point two dots and in point one dots over here but for the actual whole, you know, um, um, self-spotting and spotting your impacts at at a thousand yards with a 25 magnification, half mil dots are plenty. Okay, if you got more dots than that, what happens is they start to appear like a straight line, right? Because if you got too many dots, you're like a 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. It just looks like a straight line. That's not helpful to you. You're better off with just having half mil dots. Uh, where you can like like clearly distinguish them and see them apart and you say okay yeah that's that dot right there okay that's one and a half well, that's going to be the one and a half right or, or or that dot over there is three and a half if you got too many dots like is that a point two or is it a point four or is it, that just gets confusing now the other thing you want to look for is you want um you want the 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 dots you want half mil dots on the way down as well so you want basically every dot on this to be a, a half mil from every other dot because on some other scopes, what I noticed is they'll give you these dots going across every one mil, okay? But they give you nothing on the half mil. 
uh, and I found that that tends to be uh, more useful, right? You're better off having a, a dot like every half mil, like in every direction, okay? Rather than on some lines you've got like 0.2 dots and on other lines you've got no dots at all, okay? Um, so th th those are my thoughts on that. But I tell you guys, having doing this for the first time, 1,000 yards, it's easy. It, it is. It really is easy, okay? If you've got a scope with a mill grid and you can self-spot, I mean, this this was this was pretty easy. I mean, it, uh, I mean, there's, there's a certain amount of experience that you got to go into it with, and a certain amount of knowledge. As far as experience, again, if you can hit two inches at 100 yards, you've got the skill. You've got the skill to do this, right? That's all you. That's all you need. Um, so if you can hit two inches at 100 yards, you're good. You've got to know how to use the mill grid, and you've got to know how to self-spot or figure out how to self-spot the way I just told you and. Um, the information that I just gave you is really enough for you guys to kind of figure this out on your own, right? So, uh, you know, there's, there's, because that's, that's all there is to it. Uh, everyone, um, I want to cut in and tell you guys something else that I found extremely useful. Uh, this scope here, this primary arms 5 to 25 by 56, uh, it has 10 mils per rotation, okay? So it's a lot easier to keep track of your you know, of your elevation. So let's say if I needed to dial up 14 mils, uh, which I didn't, I only had to go up 11 and a half, but if I had to go up 14 mils, I would dial all the way around till I get to the zero, that's 10, right? And then I just got dialed to the four, so I've got 14 mils of elevation, okay? And then it has a zero stop, so I can go back down to zero, okay? So I had another scope that I was working with that had uh, each road that had six mils per rotation. So if I wanted to go up 14 mils, I would have to go around the six twice to get to 12 and then go around and then go another two after that in order to get to 14, which gets like really confusing when you look at it. You're like, where am I? Um, and so, and, and, I, and it, I didn't even have that much elevation in that scope. So get yourself a scope that has 10 mils per rotation and the zero stop it's going to make your life a lot easier uh and get yourself one of these mounts that this is a 20 moa mount normally if you zero your scope right um you're really not using the bottom half of the travel of your turns um ideally for this one i would like to get a 25 moa or 30 moa so i could be like way at the bottom and then i would be able to dial up a lot i mean i don't need that to get to a thousand yards but if at some point I want to try to get to 1,200 yards or 1,500 yards with this, uh, I would need I would I would need to change the mount uh, to a 25 or ideally a 30 because I, ha I have the room I have the travel to get a 30 MOA mount. Now, this one over here I got from Discovery Op. It was only 35 dollars. The ones that I saw that were 25 MOA and 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 uh, 30 MOA they were like 200 dollars, and I just wasn't prepared to pay for that right now since especially since I don't have a range to shoot 1200 yards at the, the most i can go right now is i have access to right now is a thousand yards so it made a lot more sense to just pay the 35 dollars and get the 20 moa mount but uh yeah definitely get that it's 35 dollars from discovery ops get on amazon and that will give you four additional mils of, L, of of travel you know where you can dial up if you need to okay you gotta you gotta sell spot you gotta see what the you, you're not gonna be able to because i used to think that I can hold up a wind, look at a wind ribbon. I got wind ribbons all over on the trees over here. Look at that wind ribbon. And uh, based on what I'm seeing off the wind ribbon, know exactly what my hold is going to be downrange. Okay? Uh, and the reality is that just because there's wind here doesn't mean there's wind down there. And sometimes there's wind in between. And sometimes the wind is going in this, you know, in a circle. Um, so the, the wind ribbons are useful because obviously if you see the wind blowing that way, uh, yeah, you want to hold the other way a little bit, right? So it's it's useful as a starting point, okay? But the mill grid is is you know is going to give you the the real data, the actual data that you need to make that shot. The uh, the, the wind ribbons and the, uh, the the information that you might get from your ballistic calculator, like I went into it, that's good for a starting point, okay? That's for, that's a good theoretical starting point. But the mill grid on your scope is what's going to give you the actual information that you need to make your shots at a thousand yards. So, um, 
I hope you guys found this video useful. And like I said, the main point of this video is that you know shooting a thousand yards with 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 an AR-10 is easy. Okay, uh, I did it my first time out. You can do it too. Um, you just gotta have some 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 tools, and they can be budget. Palmetto AR-10, SLX scope. Um, you know this uh, 17 $18 ammunition. You you can hit thousand yards on budget, um, but you know you just gotta you know you, you just gotta take this information that I gave you. Uh, practice a little bit at 200 yards. Practice a little bit at 500 yards. You know, and then uh, you know start off with, like, the way I did it, where I went to 850 yards, warm up there a little bit, and then from there go go to a thousand yards. I think that's the way. That's a good way to do it. Okay? Now, five years down the road or three years down the road, I may have a I may have a different idea on this, uh, so it'll be interesting. That's part of, part of the reason why I record these videos, is so that down the road I can come back and I can I can look at my old videos and, and see how my ideas might have changed. Just like now, I go back and I look at videos from like um, from like whatever five years ago, eight years ago. This, this channel goes all the way back to 2006. Uh, actually, the 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 Tafa channel, TSAFA, the original YouTube channel I have, goes back to 2006. So I go back and I look at my own vi old videos and I see how some of my ideas uh, have stayed the same and, and in other cases how they have changed. And, and that's perfectly fine. You know, I mean, as you go through life and, you know, you're going to come across different ideas and you can try different things out and see what works for you. And then you make changes as you need to. Okay, So uh, thanks for wa watching. Drop some comments below and I'm going to include a playlist in the description in the comments uh, to this Palmetto AR-10 and the, uh, the scope, the primary arm scope that's on it. Talk to you also. Okay, so that was low to the right, around four mils to the right. Let's try that again and see if we get a consistent hit in the same spot. Three mils to the right, two. So I'm going to dial up another two mils. I'm going to hold two over. Landed about like three inches to the right of the target I was aiming at. Sliding right there. Okay, so that's my hold. Uh, let me not put the table ammo. That I'm gonna because I got another magazine full of 10 rounds. So before the wind conditions change, put the next magazine in there. And we're gonna put 10 rounds on that paper target. So it's two mils to the right. Let's see if we can spot some impact. And what I learned from the Holding at 900 is if I spot the impact change, uh, immediately move to it, not second guess it. Okay, thousand yards. Here I come.
We're not seeing impacts. I'm hoping that's because the target's covering them. I am getting thrown out of the scope a lot though. I, mean, I can see why people love their muzzle brakes. Uh, it looks like it's pushed to the right. Hold on three mil. For that last one, I made that immediate correction because I saw a splash to the right, and that, and I could also feel that the wind picked up. And I made that immediate correction, and hopefully that last one hit. Eight out of ten. That time we got to get a tape measure on this. In fact, I'm going to pause this. We got to go back and measure this out. We got to measure this out. This is with the Freedom Munitions, 147 grains. 